described it um, as my wife says is my my hobby that got out of hand quickly it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood a beautiful day for a neighbor would you be mine you know Fred Rogers wasn't the biggest proponent I guess of merchandise when it came to um, you know selling different items out there for, for people to buy other than books and a lot of videos there was some out there at the time you know you've got um, you know the smaller, you know a lot of the little trolley models and things like that. So he wasn't out to make a buck. I don't, I don't think as much as he was out to um, to educate, to teach kids, uh, and make them feel important. And so that's why I think that there's there's not an entire basement full, an entire room full of this kind of merchandise. We're just limited to a handful of shelves here. Mine, won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? Hi. Glad to see you today. I shall button my buttons on the sweater, change my shoes, and get ready to have some time with you in this very special studio of ours. I grew up, you know, watching the neighborhood, um, in, enjoyed the show as a, you know, obviously as a kids program. When I when I finished my undergraduate degree in uh, roughly 2001, I believe. I had an extra invitation to the graduation ceremony, and, and I thought I would, um, would send a, an extra invitation to Mr. Rogers, just on a whim. And so I did, and within two days received a response from him, um, a very detailed letter, you know, congratulating me on my, on my achievements and um, you know, showing his gratitude for me going into the education field. Um, and, and it just kind of struck a chord. It made me realize that this guy was so much more than a children's television host that this guy had uh, you know Fred Rogers was was a man with a message and not just a TV show from there the more I researched the more I got into it and the more um, I realized there were other people with a, a similar appreciation um, it just it, it caught like wildfire about nine years ago uh, I, I was looking for some information online about a record that I had when I was a kid a Mr. Rogers record and I was surprised there was nothing out there that was a kind of an all-encompassing Mr. Rogers site um, I, I felt like that was a shame. I felt like you know this guy who had had this this unbelievable career in uh, children's education um, and television, but there was nothing out there dedicated to his entire career that was kind of user friendly. Um, and so in that in that moment, I thought you know that's a, that's a void in the internet that I need to fill. And so what I what I started at the time nine years ago was. Um, just a free blog, just a just a blog um, through Google, if, if I remember right. It was just a general website um, that was about the episodes, about different pieces of memorabilia that I had come across, and it quickly snowballed. And so it's just it's just grown. It's created quite a following through social media, um, through Twitter, through Facebook, Instagram. Um, the site itself gets gets an unbelievable amount of hits e each day, and from people locally from people you know nationwide worldwide because uh, who doesn't know mr rogers and so it's just it's kind of taken on a life of its own over the past nine years since i've i've, I've been doing this website uh, called the neighborhood archive um, I've, I've been in touch with a handful of people who actually were on the show people who were um, either cast members crew members and over the course of doing so uh, a lot of them have been gracious enough to drop me a line in the mail um, send me a note of encouragement telling me they're, they're, you know, they're supportive of what I'm doing. They appreciate me carrying on the, the message of Fred Rogers. Of course. So yeah, this is, you know, here in Command Central, this is where I do most of the work for the website. And this happens to be one of my favorite, I guess, segments from the, from the neighborhood. Um, this is where a, a young boy, this is from the early 80s, um, a boy by the name of Jeff Erlanger. Um, a boy in a wheelchair um, with some disabilities um, visited the neighborhood and you can see here it's it's one of the most candid examples of, of you know Fred showing the importance of all people to um, to whoever he's with and this is him singing a song candidly with Jeff and uh, it just kind of it makes a hair on your arm stand up a little bit you know that um, to see that he's got all these cameras the crew around him 
And, and in that moment, there's nothing more important to Fred Rogers than that boy right there. And that, to me, speaks volumes about who he was and the, the message that he, uh, the message he communicated. The message that Fred presented on his show in the neighborhood was 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 different from any other show that had been um, on the air up until that time and quite honestly is different from any show that's been on the air since. Um, it wasn't the let's learn how to read, it wasn't the ABCs, it wasn't the let's sing songs together as much as it was you're valuable as an individual. Like The way you are right now um, is perfect. The way you are right now is, is, is ideal. This is the way you were meant to be. You don't need to be any other way other than the way you are right now. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you, so let's make the most of this beautiful day, beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine, could you be mine, won't you be my neighbor, won't you please, won't you please, please won't you be my neighbor. It is a beautiful day. Doesn't matter what it's like outside, can be a beautiful day inside.